So uh, thanks everyone who's who's joined us again for the second week. It's uh, good to see you back. And thanks everyone who's joining us for the first time too. One of the good things about Google is that they keep doing lots of stuff, but one of the bad things about Google is they keep doing lots of stuff. So it means that the stuff that they used to do doesn't often work after a while and they, they need to do it a different way. So that keeps us busy because we keep having to change how we do things. So that's one of the purposes of the community so we can help each other deal with the ongoing changes that, that we have to look after all the time. So um, I'm going to hand over to Martin now, he's going to take us through a couple of the things we've been covering in this call. Thanks Bruce. I've got a, um, a, a tagline for the show I thought I'd try out. So, the show where script happens. No, no, I'll keep working on that. Yeah, you so, should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One other thing that um, relates to the show we did last month um, is around uh, the fact that project keys have been deprecated. So, um, obviously, if you're using libraries or doing um, OAuth, um, then uh, a part of that flow is having, uh, a, a, well, was to have a project key declared, which you would then have a user callback on. We all kind of woke up and suddenly project keys were deprecated, and um, there wasn't really much notice about that. Um, since then, um, Eric leader from Google has uh, posted on the Google App Script community um, some clarification going on uh, with project keys and moving to script IDs. Um, the, the, the good news seems to be that, um, uh, well, in fact, he says nothing will break. There's also been a lot of discussion around um, Google Drive uh, web hosting. It really leads on nicely and fingers crossed that Spencer has managed to get his system back up and running um, to some of the alternative um, places that you can uh, host things like images uh, for your add-ons and scripts. So uh, over to you, Spencer. We know that on uh, August 31st, Drive hosting is going to disappear. Uh, so which means if you're hosting images, um, JavaScript libraries, anything like that, they're going to quit working inside your, your add-ons and your scripts on the 31st. Um, there's a few uh, alternate and really good choices that you can use to host. And uh, I'll be going over one today. Uh, a big one that they just pushed, if you watch Google I.O., is uh, Firebase. It became part of the uh, Google family last year. And they made a big push at Google I.O. And uh, what part of this was uh, the introduction of Firebase hosting. So today we're going to take a look at uh, using Firebase hosting to host uh, assets for your app script projects. Firebase can be found, it's at firebase.google.com. The first thing to do to get started is there's a little bit of tooling that you need to get going. Firebase uses Node.js um, to run its command line tool. If you're on a Chromebook, um, there's there's, the tool doesn't work natively, but there's um, online sites that you can use, such as like Cloud9, which is uh, C9.io. C9 this is actually, a, it's an integrated uh, it's a website that has an IDE built into it, and you'll be able to do, if you're on a Chromebook, you'll be able to fulfill all these steps and get these tooling going on there. So the first thing you need to do is install Node.js, and from there, you install the Firebase command line tool, and it's simply by running this command right here. And this command comes off of the Firebase documentation of how to in install the tool. And once your tool is installed, you're going to go back. You're going to go to Firebase.google.io and get a project. So let's do that. So we're going to come to Firebase. I'm already logged into this site using my Google account. So I'm going to go to the console. And I'm going to click uh, Create New Project. And we'll call this uh, Totally Unscripted Live. We'll create that project. So this project um, is actually a, a developer's console project. 
it is the the uh, Firebase console, the Cloud console, and the Dev console are pretty much they're three separate tools, but they're actually kind of one with different interfaces that deal with different tools. So now we have a project already set up, now set up in uh, Firebase. Our the next step is to create. Um, a project folder folder on your local development. So on my local machine, for example, I can come to my terminal and I can make a directory called uh, my project. Working off the convention of the Firebase tools, you would make a public folder. For this demonstration, I got a couple images that we're going to host and then we're going to link to in our app script project. So I know for, I have on my desktop, I have some cat pictures. So, you weren't kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I actually got some cat pictures. So, uh, so here I, I got some uh, cat pictures that I, I have them now copied into my public folder. So now I can use the Firebase tool. I'm now in my, the my, pro, my project folder. So you use this tool, Firebase. That's the command line tool. And you run Firebase init. And this will initialize uh, your project and sync it up with your console project. So now you'll see that it's written a, a couple of new files needed for uh, deployment. So now we just hit Firebase deploy. We're in our. We can go to our uh, our project, our add-on. This is just a, a quick little. All this does is just serves up one uh, HTML page called index, and there's our wonderful cat inside our app skip project. Now we've got an, an, a new face to uh, totally unscripted, but not a new face to the community. We've got um, Steve Webster, um, who's um, a top con contributor uh, and also a, a moderator um, for the uh, uh, the Google um, Add-ons developer community. Hi, Steve. And Steve, you're going to share some of your magic today about um, some of the flows that you can do to um, help help keep your users informed of new features. Yes. Hello, everyone. Yeah, so what I want to explain today is, let's say I want to make some money with an add-on. And part of this effort is communication. So let's say you get up to 20, 30, 50 plus thousand users. Well, wouldn't it be nice to let them know whenever there's a new feature with like a pop-up dialogue? And when this occurs, we don't want to annoy them by showing this pop-up every time they log in. So let me share my screen and show you what I'm talking about. See, let's open this up. Okay, so if there's a new announcement I want to make, there's new features, something I want to share, it's, or, or it's possible to do that by leveraging the property service. So we're gonna get into how to do that. Well, I'll be sharing this resource that I have here. It's a little, uh, description and one of the things we want to accomplish is um, how do we leverage our tools with an app script to do this well one simple way is to leverage the property service so let me show you a little visual here what I'm talking about now it's possible to go to the online documentation for Google App Script and in fact, I've copied and pasted the description of the property service here. And I'll share this drawing as well at the conclusion of our episode. But basically, we have one Google Apps script, and then within this Google Apps script, we have three methods. There's a script method, user method, and document method. So what we're going to use in this uh, demonstration is the script method and user method. So what we're going to do is with this app script I'm going to create a key value and the value could be anything but let's say we're using it, a date so I'll set at the script level a date and then at the user method if it's a first-time user I'm going to assign the value of the script to the user method 
So if it's a new user, they'll always get an announcement pop-up. But let's say uh, a couple months later, I have my existing users, and it could be 50,000 of them, and I want to explain to them I've got some new features. So what I'll do, I'll go to the script method, change the key value uh, from like, like today's date, and then when the user logs in, the script will check the user method for that particular user. If it's not the same as the script, if it's different, then we want to go ahead, throw that announcement up to them. And then uh, we want to set the same value of the script to the user. So if it's the same value, we will not display the pop-up. All right, so let's go in to the code. So when we're creating our app scripts uh, with add-ons, we typically have the server side and the client side. So in this case, on the client JavaScript side, when the add-on is ready, I want to do a check. So I simply call a server function. In this case, I'm calling it new version. So let's go over to the server side. And so here is where I'm comparing the two methods, script method versus the user method. And right here is where if it's a new user or if the script is a new value compared to the last time the user has opened up the add-on, it will then go ahead and show the dialog. And the dialog is just simply another function here leveraging the HTML service. So in this case, it's called new version. So that is just basically HTML where you can put in whatever you want, any style that you want. And I typically put in a closed statement here. And I also like to um, put an update just as a best practice. Last time it was updated. Now, to update the uh, script method, I could have a function to do that, but it's possible to simply go into File, Project Properties, Script Properties tab, and change it here. Let's say I change it to another date, or as long as it's different from what it was before. Click Save. If I go back to my example, it should now pop up again because the user script is different from the script method. Just a reminder that this is a community show, so um, we're looking for volunteers to step forward um, and show off, share some stuff for our next show, and we'll uh, include a, uh, contact details, a, a suggestion box on the, on the event page, and we'll include that with the show notes as well. And who knows, you might might get a t-shirt just saying not, not guaranteeing <laughs> when am i getting uh, my t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> i'm not saying just you know <laughs> who knows <laughs> so with that thank you all for joining participating washing washing watching and um hopefully you'll be able to join us next time <laughs>